all of a sudden the patient goes unresponsive. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alyssa. If you're new, don't forget to click that subscribe button down below. I do a little bit of everything. I do vlogs, nursing related content, hauls, clean with me, pretty much a little bit of everything. So if you couldn't tell by today's video title, today's video is going to be me sharing my first uh, code blue experience. And I've debated doing this just because obviously I want to keep privacy. So I'm going to be very vague with this story for obvious reasons, but I do want to kind of share it and kind of explain how it kind of happened and how I felt during it and after it and, you know, coping and things like that. So without further ado, let's just, let's just jump into it. So my first code blue, it's actually my, knock on wood, it's been my only code blue. Uh, I did have a rapid response that uh, ended up kind of um, going more towards a code situation, but they were in no code, so they weren't coded, if that makes sense. So I've had only two experiences, two unfortunate experiences, thankfully, so far. So I was on orientation. I think I had only been on orientation for maybe a month. I was still orientating during the day, and I think I was on days for like two months and then nights for one month before I went on my own. But the patient came up, I was with my preceptor, it was a new admit, and the patient was admitted for cardiac related issues. And I just remember going in the room, looking at my preceptor and being like, this patient, like not in the room with the patient obviously, but after the fact I was like, this patient looks super sick. Like, should they even be on our unit? Um, we were an IMC unit, which means intermediate care, so it's kind of, it's an ICU step down unit. So uh, there are drips and things like that, like insulin, different cardiac drips, CBIs, things like that. They're a little more um, intense and higher acuity. I was like, this patient looks super sick. Like, you know, is this normal? And my preceptor has, is a super senior nurse, has been nursing for quite a while. And she was like, yeah, sometimes, you know, they do look this sick. Some diagnostics were being run and something came to our attention that was not good, not good at all. So with that, there was a little bit more imaging that needed to be done. We were preparing to transfer the patient uh, just due to their their acuity was really high. And um, honestly, they probably would have been transferred to the ICU, but they were trying to get them out of our facility because of the situation. So we were doing some other imaging and we literally even had to stop in the hall to do a quick echo. It was just, it was crazy. So I just remember thinking like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe this is happening. Um, this is super bad. And we kind of knew that it could go south very, very quickly. The doctor had given us some specific parameters to follow. And right before we left the unit to go to do some more diagnostic stuff, uh, the situation kind of got worse. So doctor was aware, we actually had the cardiologist with us. He's, the cardiologist stayed with us um, the whole time, which is seriously super commend it because the cardiologist kind of knew that this was just not a good situation. So we are doing some diagnostic studies and all of a sudden the patient goes unresponsive. And we kind of were waiting for it, unfortunately. And I just could not believe that this was happening. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is a code blue. Like, holy So I run, I'm new, new to the facility, new all around, on a different unit, like no clue where I am. I'm trying to run to grab a crash cart. Lucky for me, there were numerous people in the room. There was, we had a diagnostic person, we had the cardiologist, we had my preceptor, me, and another nurse also came as well, thankfully. It was two of my like favorite um, senior nurses. So they were with, so one of them had hopped on top of the patient to start CPR. I ran trying to find a crash cart. I found the emergency room, but I found an emergency room physician and he didn't know where to go. I super didn't know where to go. I basically got lost looking for a crash cart, which super sucked. And if I would have been on my unit, it would have been a completely different situation because I obviously knew where the there were two crash carts on my old unit. So that really sucked, but luckily they had one closer and obviously the code team came, they called the code. The nice thing about this whole code situation is my friend Joe, which um, he and I did a Q and A together sweated our butts off in a car after residency so if you want to watch that you guys can but luckily joe was also precepting and his preceptor was the other senior nurse that was with us so he heard the code go off he knew where his preceptor was so he came down because when you're on orientation as much as it sucks and as 
there's a ton of people at a code, you have to go to the code um, if, if it's feasible. Obviously, if you are in a patient's room and there's no room, well, obviously you can't. But in this situation, Joe came down, which was super nice, and there were a bunch of ICU nurses in, and one in particular was like, hey, have you done compressions before? And I was like, no, I have never ever done compressions on anything other than a mannequin. So he's like, all right, you're up. All right, I'm like, okay, let's do this. So here I am doing compressions, like literally in my head. I'm just like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. This is what you're trained to do. And I can't believe this is actually happening. So I did compressions and it is super exhausting. And then once I got worn out, they had like, I was like, it was so awkward. I had like a knee up because the where the patient was, was super high and we couldn't lower them any lower. So like one leg up trying to do compressions. And then I was like, I need a stool. <laughs> I need a stool. So someone got me a stool, did my compressions until I was wearing out and then somebody will switch with you. That's what's really nice about the co-team is there's numerous people to kind of help you. Meanwhile, they're trying to do other things. Um, they were intubating the patient and we were trying to get other IVs started and infusing fluids and blood and whatever. So all this is happening and then I was like kind of sitting in the back with Joe and we were just like looking at each other like still in disbelief that this was even happening. And I was like, hey, Joe has Joe has never done compressions. I was like, Joe, have you? He's like, no. So basically, like I literally physically pushed Joe towards them while telling the rest of the team that he needed to do compressions. So I think Joe and I both did compressions, at least two cycles of compressions. And it was just super intense. Like we were both just like shaking. And I remember Joe, I don't know if we talked about it in the Q and A, but Joe even told me, he's like, I could literally feel the adrenaline like pumping through my veins. And it's true, like you're just like, it's crazy. Like being on adrenaline is just absolutely crazy. crazy. But I never realized how, I don't know, what's the word, CPR, if you're not a medical professional, CPR is very barbaric. And I think this is a very important thing to talk about because a full code, which means if for, for some reason your heart was to stop, you would get CPR, so you get chest, chest compressions. And when you get chest compressions, pretty much all of your ribs are broken. All of your ribs around your sternum are gonna get broken and they're gonna shove a tube down your throat because you can't breathe on your own. And I don't think people really understand that. And when you're doing chest compressions on a chest with broken ribs, either you are the one to, like the first person is typically the person to break the ribs. It's just a really weird feeling. It almost kind of feels like the dummy in a way, how the dummy's like really stiff and just kind of weird, but like not. It's super hard to explain. So it was kind of, it was a great learning experience. Unfortunately, um, the patient did not survive. And that was really hard for me. Like I was, it's so weird when you're in those situations, you don't realize how much it sucks until all your adrenaline kind of stops pumping because when you're in that situation, you're not, some people, so there's fight, flight, or freeze. And some people get their adrenaline and they're like, bum, 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 like they're ready to go. Other people are like, see you later, can't handle it. And then other people literally freeze. And that's, that's fine, it's just, how they're biologically made up. But for me specifically, I am like fight, like we're gonna get it done, you know? So I can think very clearly in those situations, even though you wouldn't think you'd be able to. So during the situation, I was totally fine. I knew what to do, no big deal. It wasn't until afterward when we took the patient back to the room <clears throat> so the family could have some time with the patient. The patient, the family had left and then we were prepared, like basically preparing the patient to um, go to the morgue. And it was just a really interesting experience. And I wasn't really expecting it. I was just like, okay, so this is, this is, this is it, you know? And I was just really surprised. And I think the hardest part about this whole situation is that when you lose a patient on the floor, you have to go back caring for the other four to six patients that you're taking care of. And I remember on this day, I had a patient that was just a jerk. And it's it's so, I need chapstick. I don't have any, where's my, hold on, where's my Coke? All right, so I got my Diet Coke. So I had a, another patient that was just complaining about the most menial things, you know? And obviously you can't say like, get over yourself. I just lost a patient. 
because A, they don't care, B, you're breaking HIPAA, you can't do that. I, I found that to be really hard because once your adrenaline kind of wears off, you are so exhausted. I was sore from doing compressions, like it was just really weird. And that was like probably, in, it was sometime in the afternoon. So I still had several hours to go on my 12 hour shift. So that was something that I didn't realize is the struggle of like having to continue on with your day. Like even, it was just such a weird feeling. Like somebody's life ended and here's my life continuing. It's just a really, I mean, obviously that's what happens, but like, it's just an interesting feeling and experience that I didn't really understand. We kind of debriefed. Pretty much everybody had heard about it at that point um, just because it was such a bizarre situation and it was just, it was not a fun situation. So I was able to debrief. It was really nice that Joe was there because I was able to kind of debrief with Joe and it was nice too to be able to have Joe because when you have a situation like this, you're really not supposed to talk about patient situations with people that weren't involved, if that makes sense. Um, just for HIPAA reasons. If for some reason my neighbor got admitted into the hospital and Joe was taking care of them, Joe can't tell me what's going on with said patient. So it's just kind of one of those things where you keep it with the people that are involved um, in the care of that patient. So that was kind of nice. What I wasn't expecting is a little bit of, obviously I'm not like, was not diagnosed with this, but I, I struggle with a little bit of what I assume to be a little bit of PTSD after the situation. I was having nightmares. I was having a hard time falling asleep. One of the nightmares I actually had is when you see a patient that has passed, they have a very, they're very gray. And I remember one night distinctly, I had a nightmare that I went in to check on the kids and that's what they looked like. And that was really hard for me. Um, and I definitely didn't expect something like that to happen. And I had to work through that a little bit. And they did offer uh, EAP, Employee Assistance Program. They did, they sent out that email um, kind of saying like, hey, if you need to talk to somebody, here you go. And like I said, we debriefed really well. Even the cardiologist debriefed with us. So it was just a really, it was such a wholesome experience. My favorite chaplain, he also, he was like right, like right after, he was like, how are you? And I was like, me? Like, you, wait but you care about me, like it was just weird and he's such a cool guy. But it was nice how much support that is given in that situation, at least at my facility. But I did struggle with it afterwards. I had to go to sleep listening to podcasts because I would continuously play the whole situation over in my head every single night for like two weeks. So in order to turn my brain off, I literally would fall asleep listening to podcasts. And that's kind of a little bit of a pro tip. And it wasn't that I hadn't dealt with the situation because I debriefed, I was still doing exercise to kind of deal with the situation. It's not like I was just trying to bury it, it's just I needed I needed to turn my brain off while I was going to sleep. I was fine during the day, it's just, I'm just a thinker and like laying in bed thinking about it was like, was super hard for me. So that's kind of uh, my first Code Blue situation. Uh, kind of a little bit of a downer of a video, but I really wanted to share it because if you work in healthcare, especially if you work in a hospital, you are going to experience a situation similar to this. It's only kind of a matter of time. So that was my experience. Um, it super sucked. Uh, although, I mean, we did the best that we could and that I'm grateful for. I know that we did the best that we could. We did everything in our power for that patient and that is a good feeling. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you are watching this video, let me know if you have had any experiences similar to mine, whether you've dealt with the code blue or maybe you're not in the medical field and you experienced some sort of scary situation outside of, you know, the, the medical field. But I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you on the flip side. Okay.